Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms and welcome back to Survival in Tennis. In this series, we are discussing making and maintaining antennas using field expedient means for use in austere environments. Welcome back to Survival in Tennis. In our last Survival in Tennis, which was Survival in Tennis 1, we made the coax cable dipole for VHF, which is a pretty simple antenna to make and it taught us how we break out the two conductors of coaxial cable to utilize it for making an antenna. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to make a larger antenna for a lower frequency. Now feed RF feed line is kind of like cordages to bushcraft. It's a it's a resource it's hard to replenish and it's one that's hard to make and we're going to make our own feed line in another video in the survival antenna series but if you have enough feed line available to you to make a dipole, you could certainly make an HF dipole out of this. The problem is when you start getting into your lower frequencies, your 40 meter and your 80 meter band, you're going to end up having to have a ton of feed line available to you. So what we're going to do today is, is we're going to go ahead and build an HF dipole utilizing our antenna we made survival antennas one our coax dipole and we're going to extend it the length of it with some generic hookup wire let's go ahead and build our elements we're going to make this for the 10 meter band and it's always when you're making wire antennas it's always good to build them around the cw portion of the band so that way you have a lot more wire to play with when you're building the antenna and we know by taking 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz and then having that that we come up with around eight and a half feet for our antenna length and what we know is is that if we take that and round it up we come up with 18 feet and 18 feet is three of my arm lengths which would also give us enough wire if we were building this for the cb band So we have our 18 feet right there. I'm going to cut the wire with our Leatherman tool. We'll go ahead and make our strain reliefs for our elements. So starting in approximately the same spot for each wire, we'll take this end here and we're just going to take it and make an overhand loop. Make a bite in your wire. And then just make a simple overhand knot. Pull it through, dress it up. You have your tail, which you will connect to your feed point. So you want to make both of our ends as even as possible. Now we're going to strip away about two inches of insulation from this end of our element. And now we've got both of our element ends exposed. Now go ahead and cut your antenna back that you made already. About six inches from the end. And now strip back about two inches of insulation from your center conductor. Take our elements that we have made and slide our elements down over the body of our feed line just like that now we're going to want to just go ahead and tie in our feed lines and the way we're going to do that is with simple square knots square knot wire splice make a bite in your wire on one side take your second one come through the middle go over the top on one side of the bite over top on the other side of the bite, then back through the hole again. Pull it tight. Now as your knot tightens up, you can see just how strong that connection is. Now take your tail, just wrap your tail around here. both sides and there's your square knot wire splice. You can see how that looks. Now the problem is is when we put tension on it you can see how our elements slip away. 
So we need to retain our elements in order to keep them from sliding around on the feed point. So taking a small piece of cordage, it's about two foot of bank line. Start with your cordage. Start with a simple clove hitch. Just like that. Bind it up against your elements. Now go above your element and tie a second clove hitch. And you can see how this will bind up on itself. So you can work this knot against each other and you can see just how tight that is. Now merely go around your feed line again, right over left, tight, then left over right for a square knot finish. And there you have it. And you can see it's very, very strong. So electrically we have a sound connection and mechanically we have a sound connection too. Now that we've got our field expedient feed point assembled, it's time to work on the other end of our dipole. Uh, there are fairly high voltages present on the ends of a dipole antenna, so insulators are certainly a good idea. Uh, Typically, at lower to moderate power levels, all I do is, is make a loop at either end of the element, like that, with a bowling knot, and then take cordage and tie that off, and that generally suffices. You could certainly make field expedient insulators if you desire to do so. Here's how you make an antenna insulator out of deadfall. All you do is, is cut a couple slots in it with a Leatherman tool or if you've got a small saw and cut them at a 45 degree angle in relation to the material and then you can see I've got my antenna end here made a loop in it and did the same with my support line and there we go field expedient antenna insulator but I would not take this element itself and attach it to anything metallic or anything conductive without some kind of insulation and as I said before we're going to use cordage to string this up and in doing that that should provide enough insulation from whatever it's mounted to. Well here's our little antenna strung up in the yard between a couple of oak trees. You can see that it's good across the 10 meter band and that's why it's always important when you're building antennas like this and using knots to always cut long. So in review taking our coax only antenna that we've made in the past. We've made a antenna capable of operating on the 10 meter amateur band with just the inclusion of 18 feet of hookup wire and 2 feet of number 36 bank line. The only tool used in constructing this antenna was a Leatherman multi-tool. This antenna could certainly be improved with the inclusion of wire ties. Uh, maybe even electrical tape, and certainly by soldering the elements. However, this is something that we have built with the absolute minimum amount of materials available to us and the minimum amount of tools, and that is the purpose of survival antennas. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.